In this video, we're going to work on some word problems using the compound interest formula. There's two equations that you need to know. A is equal to P times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the N times T. Now, in this formula, P is basically the principal. That's how much you would deposit in a savings account or a checking account, something like that. A represents the future of value of that amount in the account after it's been credited for interest over a period of time. So you can think of P as the present value, how much you put in in the present, and A is like how much it will be worth 10 or 20 years later. R is the annual interest rate. So let's say if the annual interest rate is 8%, you need to plug in 0 0.08 for R. You need to convert 8% into a decimal. To do that, you would divide by 100. N is how many times you receive interest in a given year. So let's say if it's compounded monthly, that's 12 months in a year. So N would be 12 for monthly. Now what about for weekly? What is the value of N? There's 52 weeks in a year, so N would be 52. Daily, N is 365. Quarterly, N is 4. Semi-annually, N is 2. And annually, N is 1. And T is basically the time in years. Now, there's one more equation that you need. And it's this one. A is equal to P times E raised to the RT. A and P are basically the same as the last equation. P is the principal. That's the amount that you put in to an account. A is the future value after some time, maybe 10 or 20 years later. E is basically the inverse of the natural log function. So if you have your calculator, to find E, you may have to type in shift natural log or second ln, something like that. R is the annual interest rate as a decimal, and T is the time in years. So when do we use this equation compared to the other equation? Now, if you hear the keyword compounded continuously, use this equation. If it's compounded times something else, let's say monthly, daily, weekly, uh, quarterly, you would use the other equation. But the only time you would use this equation if the problem says it's compounded continuously. So let's work on some problems. Susan puts 20000 in a savings account paying 8% annual interest compounded monthly. At this rate, how much money will be in the account after 40 years? So it's not compounding continuously, therefore we need to use this equation. So P is the principal. She puts in 20000 in the account. R is the annual interest rate, which is 8%. If we divide that by 100, that's 0 0.08. And she receives that total 8% annual interest in 12 months. So basically, that 8% is divided into 12. So her account is credited with interest every month. So we're going to divide this 0 0.08 by n, which is 12. And we want to find out how much money will be in the account after 40 years. t is 40. 0 0.08 divided by 12 plus 1 is basically 1.006 repeating. Twelve times forty is four hundred eighty. So if you type this in the calculator, you should get a value of around four hundred eighty five thousand four hundred sixty seven dollars and seventy nine cents. So that's how much money will be in the account after 40 years. So as you can see, it pays to save early. Here's another problem. You can pause the video and work on it. 
John wants to have $2 million for retirement in 45 years. He invests in a mutual fund paying an average of 9.5% each year, compounded quarterly. How much should he deposit into his mutual fund? So we need to use this equation, A equals P1 plus R, divided by N raised to the NT. So we know the future value. He wants to have $2 million in his account. So he needs to decide how much he should put in now to get to that level. So we're looking for a P in the problem. R is the annual interest rate. 9.5 divided by 100 is 0 0.095. And it's compounded quarterly. That is four times a year. So four times a year, his account is credited with interest. So we're going to divide it by four. And then it's raised to the NT, or 4 times 45. T is the time in years. So you could type it in exactly the way you see it. Let's find out what this value is equal to first. 0 0.095 divided by 4 is 0 0.02375. And let's add 1 to it. So that's 1.02375. And 4 times 45 is 180. So this is going to be P times 68.376152. So to solve for P, we need to divide both sides by this number. So P is 2 million divided by 68.376152. So that's going to be about 29,000. 249 and 96 cents. So if he invests about 29,000, let's round it to 250. If he invests that much, and if he finds an account paying an annual interest rate of 9.5%, compounding quarterly, then in 45 years, he should have 2 million in his retirement. So if he starts investing, let's say in his 20s, by his mid or upper 60s, he can have that much in savings. So as you can see, due to the effect of compound interest, it pays to save early. Sarah wishes to turn her 10000 investment into 100000 in 20 years. How much interest does she need to receive compounded annually to reach her goal? So in this problem, we need to solve for R. So let's use this equation again. So A is the value in 20 years. She wants 100000 P is her initial deposit, the principal, which is 10000 R is the annual interest rate, which we're looking for. And N is 1 since it's compounded annually, which means that she receives interest once per year. And T is 20. So the first thing we should do in order to solve for R is divide both sides by 10,000. 100,000 divided by 10,000 is 10. So basically, she wants to multiply her investment by a factor of 10. So now what can we do to solve for R? How can we get rid of this exponent? In order to open the parentheses, we need to turn the 20 into a 1. To do that, raise both sides to the reciprocal of 20, or 1 over 20. 20 times 1 over 20 is 1. So what we have is 10 raised to the 1 over 20 equals 1 plus r. So to solve for r, we need to subtract both sides by 1. So it's 10 raised to the 1 over 20 minus 1. 10 raised to the 1 over 20 is about 1.122. And subtracted by 1, 
this is equal to 0.122. Now, to turn it into a percentage, multiply by 100%. So R is 12.2%. So if she wants to multiply her investment by a factor of 10, she needs an account that is paying 12.2 annual interest. If she can find that, then in 20 years, she's going to multiply her investment by a factor of 10. So if she invests 100000 in 20 years, it's going to be a million. If she invests 200000 in 20 years, it's going to be 2 million. Mary invests $50,000 into an index annuity that's averaging 8.4% per year, compounded semi-annually. At this rate, how many years will it take for her account to reach 1 million? So let's write the equation. A is equal to P times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the NT. So her goal is to reach a million. That's the, that's the A value, so to speak. Her investment, the principal, is 50000 The interest rate is 8.4%, which is 0 0.084. And it's compounded semi-annually, which means she receives interest twice a year. So N is 2. So what we need to do is solve for T. So first, let's divide both sides by 50,000. So what's 1 million divided by 50,000? That's equal to 20. So she wants to multiply her investment by 20. 0 0.084 divided by 2 plus 1 is 1.042. In order to solve for t, we need to use logarithms. So let's take the log of both sides. So on the left, we're going to have log 20. And on the right, we're going to have a log 1.042 raised to the 2t. A property of logs allows us to take the exponent and move it to the front. So therefore what we now have is log 20 is equal to 2t times log 1.042. Now to get t by itself, let's divide by 2 log 1.042, both sides. So therefore, t is equal to, I'm going to take it one step at a time, log 20 is about 1.30103. Log 1.042 times 2 is 0 0.0357354. If you divide these two numbers, you should get 36.4 years, if I typed it incorrectly. Mistakes do happen. But this is how long it's going to take her to multiply her investment by a factor of 20. So in 36.4 years, if she can find an account that is averaging 8.4% per year in interest, she could turn this 50,000 investment to a million. Julia invests 100,000 in an account paying 7.2% interest compounded continuously. How much money will be in her account after 30 years? Now, anytime you see this key expression, compounding continuously, this is the equation that you need. So we're looking for the future value of her account 30 years from now. So we're solving for A. 
we have our principal investment. It's 100000 And the interest that she's receiving is 7.2% or 0 0.072 as a decimal. And her account will be active for 30 years. Point zero seven two times thirty is basically two point sixteen. And E, which is the inverse of the natural log function, E raised to two point one six is about like eight point six seven one one three seven six something times a hundred thousand. So her investment is gonna be worth eight hundred sixty seven thousand a hundred thirteen dollars and seventy seven cents Mark wants to have one point five million in fifty years. How much should he invest now in an account paying twelve percent interest compounding continuously? So here is our key expression which means we need to use this equation again. So we have the future value, the value in 50 years. So that's A. In this problem, we're looking for P. We need to know how much he should deposit into his account in order to reach this goal. R is 12% or 0.12, and the time is 50 years. So first, let's multiply 0.12 times 50, and that's equal to 6. Now, to get P by itself, let's divide both sides by E to the 6. So P is going to be 1.5 million divided by E to the 6. And basically, this is equal to 3,718 dollars and 13 cents, which seems very, very small. But the reason why this small amount turns into this large amount is because of the time. 50 years is a long time. That's one. And two, the interest rate is much higher than the interest of the other problems, which were like 7 8%. A 12% interest rate compounded continuously will greatly increase its account value over a long period of time. As you can see, a small investment was greatly multiplied over 50 years. John invests $5 million in an account paying 11% interest compounded continuously. How long will it take for his investment to turn into 2 million? So let's try this problem. So we have the same formula, A is equal to PERT. And we have the future value of 2 million. And his deposit of 5,000. R is 0.11, but this problem, we're looking for T. So let's begin by dividing both sides by 5,000. So if you wish to do this in your head, you can uh, get rid of three zeros. So you have 2,000 divided by 5. 2,000 is basically 20 times 100. And 20 divided by 5 is 4. 4 times 100 is 400. So if you take 2 million and divide it by 5,000, it will give you 400. So we have 400 is equal to E raised to the 0.11 T. Now, instead of using log, we're going to use natural log. The reason being is the natural log of E is equal to 1. So natural log 400 is equal to the natural log E raised to the point 11 T. So whenever you have a variable 
any exponent, you can use the log function or the natural log function. But when you're dealing with e, it's easier to deal with or use the natural log function. So what should we do now? Once you get to this part, take the exponent and move it to the front. So we have the natural log of 400, and that's equal to 0.11t times the natural log of e. Now the natural log of e, as you mentioned, is 1, so that's just going to disappear. So our last step is simply to divide both sides by 0.11. Natural log of 400 is about 5.99146. If we divide that by 0.11, this is going to be 54.47. So that's how long he needs to invest if he wants to have 2 million. Now 5,000 is a small investment, but if he invests early, that's the key, he can take the advantage of the effect of compound or compound interest. His money will grow to two million if he does it in if he invests early, let's say fifty four years early. So as you can see, whenever you invest early and you can use time to help multiply your investment. Now granted, this effect will be greatly increased if you can find an account, a savings account or a checking account that's paying a very high interest rate. Typically, mutual funds and indexed annuities is probably the best place where you can get such high interest rates. But that is it for this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.